In this video, we derive the uh, rate law for the enzyme catalyst reaction according to the Michael Sementen mechanism using the steady state approximation for the intermediate. Right, so this is where we are. Uh, when we measure the initial rate for an enzyme catalyst reaction like this, as a function of the uh, substrate concentration, what we actually get is a, a function that looks like this, okay, and that has a very well-defined uh, expression. Okay? Now the question is whether we can uh, obtain this expression and find values for the constants A and B uh, by looking at the reaction mechanism. In a prior video we have seen how we can get there uh, by assuming a situation of pre-equilibrium in which this uh, step is very fast, this case of B is very uh, high compared to case of A prime. That pre-equilibrium mechanis mechanism works well for some enzymes but not for all. And the problem is that it requires an energy diagram like this. Okay. Notice that to have a pre-equilibrium in which this equilibrium is formed really fast before ES has a chance to go to products, then the barrier for this step has to be very, very high. Okay. Uh, but that is something that is not universally true for all, en for all enzymes. Okay. There might be some enzymes uh, that over millennia of evolution, okay, they've actually been able to lower the barrier and increase the rate for the process and in that case, then, uh, it's, no longer, it's no longer the case that this step is clearly rate limiting, right? You might have that now this rate constant for going forward and reverse, um, that it, it actually can, uh, you know, they can be comparable, and then the pre equilibrium treatment doesn't work anymore. So the question is, can, what can you do uh, in, that step, in that case? Well, what you can do in that step is uh, to assume that uh, the ES intermediate reaches steady state. And again, we've already discussed that uh, the conditions for a steady state of an intermediate are far more common than those for a pre-equilibrium. Okay? So this situation would be much more applicable uh, to more uh, enzyme catalyzed reactions than the pre-equilibrium uh, approximation. Again, so let's see how this, uh, we can solve then this reaction mechanism and find the rate law with the steady state approximation. All right, the idea is that uh, the rate of law is simply going to be the rate law of the step that forms products and that rate law is simply equal to case B times the concentration of the intermediate. And again, the problem is that that's an inter intermediate and we cannot have it in the uh, final rate law. So uh, to find an expression uh, to replace this concentration of ES intermediate, we're going to apply the steady state approximation for that intermediate. Again, the approximation is that uh, uh, the concentration of ES in the reaction uh, is actually very small and it actually doesn't change uh, soon after the reaction has started. Okay? So if E has reached a steady state, what we say is that uh, the concentration of that ES doesn't change on time, and this can't, can only happen if the rate of the reactions that are forming the intermediate is identical to the rate of the reactions that are removing the intermediate from the reaction. Okay, so we just look at the reaction mechanism and then uh, look at those rates for formation and removal of ES. All right, so rates, uh, what is the rate of the reactions that form ES? There's only one reaction that forms ES, and that is E reacting with substrate through rate constant K sub A to generate ES. Okay, so the rate of uh, product formation is simply going to be equal to uh, K sub A concentration of E concentration of S. That is a, the, uh, the rate of formation of the ES intermediate. Okay, what about the reaction, uh, the reactions that remove um, ES from the uh, reaction mixture. You have that reaction, okay, which is going to be equal to K sub B concentration of ES, and then you have another reaction which will be ES uh, back dissociating to E plus S, and the rate for that reaction is K sub B prime uh, concentration of ES. Alright, so um, we can solve this expression for ES and then find that the concentration of ES is going to be equal to K sub A, concentration of E, concentration of S, over K sub A prime, or K sub B, if you want to, plus K sub A prime. Okay? That's what we get when we solve this expression for the concentration of ES. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is introduce a new constant, which is going to be called B K sub M, and this is called the Michaelis constant. Okay, and the definition of this constant is going to be equal to K sub B plus K sub A prime over K sub A. Okay, 
Okay, that is how we define the Michael is uh, constant. Okay, it's just a, a relationship between all three rate constants that are involved in the reaction. Right, so notice that if we replace that, uh, if substitute these uh, constants in this expression, we will get an expression that looks like this. Concentration of E times concentration of S over K sub M. Okay, so that simplifies quite a bit the expression. Now, much as before, uh, here we have a problem, and that is that well, we have a very nice expression for the concentration of enzyme substrate complex that depends on the concentration of substrate and a constant. We still here have here a dependence on the concentration of enzyme, which is not uh, not present in the overall rate law. Right. So the question is, what are we going to do to get rid of this concentration of enzyme and put it as a function of constants? Well, we're going to use the mass balance of the enzyme as we did before. Okay. Uh, first, what we actually do is uh, find uh, or re replace this, uh, solve this expression for the concentration of enzyme, and this is simply going to be equal to uh, K sub M concentration of ES over the concentration of substrate. Okay. I'm going to put an asterisk here on this equation because it's an equation that we're going to see later on when we study uh, enzyme inhibition. Okay, so we will be recalling uh, this expression. But for now, there is that what we have to do here is, is uh, uh, try to use here the mass balance of the enzyme to be able to put this as a function of constants. All right, so again, recalling what the mass balance of the enzyme is, the concentration of the enzyme at the start of the reaction has to be identical to the concentration of enzyme any time in the reaction. And after the reaction has started, the enzyme can either be only uh, in free form or as a function of or uh, as the uh, enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so and this gives us a way to find out what uh, the concentration of E at is. Okay, which we can then uh, replace back here. Okay, the concentration of enzyme is the same thing as the concentration of enzyme at time zero minus the concentration of ES. Okay. So uh, here we have an expression in which uh, we just have the concentration of enzyme as a function of constants. That is a constant, this is a constant, and then we have the concentration of substrate, but that is something that we want for uh, the final rate law. All right, so our uh, next step here would be to solve this expression for uh, the concentration of ES, which can be done again in a couple of steps, but it's not difficult. When you do that, you will find that the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex uh, is going to be equal to the concentration of, of uh, enzyme at the start of the reaction multiplied by the concentration of substrate and then divided over K sub M, the Michaelis constant, plus the concentration of substrate. Okay, This is our expression for the enzyme substrate complex and now this is very nice because again notice that this concentration of ES only depends on a constant a constant, and then um, the concentration of substrate, which is something that we know happens in the actual rate law. Right, so we're here in a great position to then find what the final expression for um, our rate law would look like. Okay, so our rate law is going to be equal to K sub B, and then the concentration of E is, which is simply this expression. Concentration of E at time zero times concentration of S divided over K sub M plus concentration pass. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see if we can consolidate that a little bit. We've already defined this term as Vmax, the maximum attainable rate. So our final uh, expression is going to be equal to Vmax, concentration of S over K sub M plus concentration of S. And then this K sub M has the expression equal to K sub B plus K sub A prime over K sub A. Okay, so something that we can do now is uh, see how this compares to the uh, pre-equilibrium treatment rate law. Okay, in the pre-equilibrium treatment rate law, we have the V naught is very similar to this, right? So V max, concentration of S over K sub S plus concentration of S. The definition of this K sub S is equal to K prime over K sub A. Right, so notice that these two rate laws are essentially identical. 
Okay, uh, the only modification is that this k sub m has a constant, a rate constant k sub b uh, adding up to k prime here in the num numerator, and that is missing right here. Okay, so uh, uh, we can actually see that both are actually the same in the limit that uh, you're in the pre equilibrium treatment. Right? So if this barrier is very high, again, what happens is that the value of k sub b is very, very, very low. Okay, and then what will happen is that you then uh, can neglect the value of k sub b with respect to the k prime. Right, the barrier for this process that is what uh, is cap was captured by Ka prime is actually much smaller than the barrier for that process, and that makes Ka prime much greater than K sub b. Okay, so under those circumstances, you can actually neglect K sub b, and then you recover what you did in the pre-equilibrium treatment. Okay, however, this expression is much uh, of much general applicability because it can also capture situations in which you don't have this. Right, so situations in which the barrier for the second uh, reaction is not clearly larger than the very for uh, uh, the reverse reaction. Okay, uh, and in those circumstances, even if you don't get that, but E has reached the steady state, then this uh, this equation works as well. Okay, so again, this is uh, something that is of more general applicability than the pre equilibrium treatment. Okay, so what you get from the steady state uh, is what we will be using uh, uh, to solve problems uh, in the homework.